the Supreme Court began its new term this week, the justices are set to consider several cases important to the faithful, including one on so-called gender-affirming care for minors. There is also maybe a ruling on the availability of a widely used abortion drug. And joining us now is Andrea Pachani Bear, EWTN legal analyst. Andrea, always so good to be with you. Uh, as the Supreme Court kicks off another term, what are some of the cases that you'll be watching? You know, Tracy, that's a great question. First, thanks for having me on. You know, the Supreme Court has only accepted 30 out of the around 80 cases that it's going to review this term. So we're just seeing kind of a little taste of what the court is looking at. I'm particularly interested in one that's going to be questioning deference that courts have been giving to executive agencies. It's called Chevron deference, and, and the court's going to look at a case that questions whether that is consistent with the Constitution, the balance of uh, powers between the three branches, and the role of the judiciary in interpreting the law and not deferring to the executive to do so for them. I also understand there are uh, several very influential petitions that could be heard by the court, one in particular uh, involving the Biden administration's appeal of a lower court ruling on Mifepristone. What more can you tell us about this and also the significance there? You know, yes, Tracy, that's a really important case to watch in the court's decision on whether to grant review or not. This, again, was looking at the FDA's fast track of the abortion pills, allowing for telemedicine prescriptions or even shipment through the mail. And a Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals said that that was just rushed to judgment and didn't con con was not consistent with the kind of review that needed to be given to something of such consequence. Um, the Biden administration has appealed that and there's lots of briefing, but I do think that the Fifth Circuit reasoning was um, very, very strong and is probably going to win the day if the court decides to review the case. Yeah, and also uh, another petition, I understand, that's going to be taken up involves sidewalk counselors' uh, ability to offer compassionate support to women outside of abortion clinics. Can you fill us in a little bit more about this one? Yeah, Tracy, that involves a New York County's decision to kind of put a, a bubble around abortion clinics to limit the ability of sidewalk counselors, even those that are motivated by their faith, to help people that are considering um, what to do when they're facing an unexpected or a difficult pregnancy. It really is going to be a chance for the court to, to look at, um, review some of its prior precedent. This was in the days where Roe v. Wade was an untouchable um, precedent, and now we are in a position where abortion jurisprudence isn't going to cloud the court's consideration of other important rights, particularly free speech and free exercise under the First Amendment. Andrea, what else uh, is on your radar, and what else should we be watching. You know, Tracy, I think that there are a lot of really interesting petitions that are likely to be coming before the court. In particular, I've been watching cases that have been decided by the courts of appeals involving state bans on transgender medicine for minors. Um, there have been important cases out of the Sixth Circuit and the Eleventh Circuit saying that the states do have the right to regulate health and safety, and this is an appropriate exercise of their rights. But challengers and the progressive lobby gender ideology movement is not going to go down quietly, it seems. And before I let you go, I want to ask you about this. I know you have a new project coming out. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, thanks so much for asking. Um, you know, we've decided at the Conscience Project to look at different platforms for getting our message about religious freedom, conscience rights, and parental rights out. And so we've started on YouTube a vid video series for people just to be able to understand what's at stake, some of the great victories that have happened, especially at the Supreme Court, and what regular people, parents, families can do to advance and protect their religious freedom, their conscience rights, and stop the movement of progressive ideology from kind of affecting our culture, their families, and their children. And we'll be looking out for that. Andrea, thank you so much, as always, for your time and insights. Appreciate it. God bless. Thanks, Tracy.